with his exotic choice in uniforms, with his personal security detail made up only of women, with his unconventional behavior exemplified by his rambling 2009 United Nations speech that was supposed to last 15 minutes but went on for an hour and 40. It should not be called the Security Council. It should be called the Terror Council. Muammar Gaddafi seemed to be a caricature of a tin pot tyrant with a loose grip on reality. But in the more than four decades since the then 27-year-old army officer led a coup to depose an unloved king, Gaddafi has confounded his opponents abroad and suppressed even the hint of opposition at home. Some people have disappeared. Uh, some have been convicted to very long sentences in prison. But Gaddafi's support for what he called liberation movements, what others called terrorists, turned him into an international pariah. When Libya was implicated in the bombing of a Berlin nightclub, which killed two American servicemen, though, he had picked on the wrong American president. I wouldn't believe a word he says. As confrontation seemed imminent, Gaddafi remained defiant. <laughs> The U.S. retaliatory bombing of Libya killed about 60 people, including Gaddafi's 15-month-old adopted daughter. It seemed to increase Gaddafi's anti-Western fury, culminating in the bombing of Pan Am 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, two years later. The attack killed 243 people, and Libya never admitted to it, but it did pay a settlement to the families of the American victims. That and Libya's disavowal of its nuclear weapons program produced a remarkable about turn, the reinvention of Muammar Gaddafi, friend to the West, ally in the fight against terror. We should uh, project uh, terrorism as an enemy to civilization, and uh, it should be uh, uh, fought by all of us. But Muammar Gaddafi never reformed himself or the system of absolute power at home, and he and his people are now paying the price. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London.